Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today we are going back to the future. How's that? We are going to visit with my dear, dear friend. And everybody knows I only talk to dear friends. Today is with Peter Apo. And Peter's um, latest venture is going back to the future. He has decided to redo his life in music. So, hi, Peter. <laughs> hi. Aloha, Marsha. How are you, dear? Oh, just fine. Back to the future. Hey, that's, that's the, the, the think, uh, think tech uh, thing, right? Mobilize yeah. for the future, something like yep. that? <laughs> yeah, so, Peter, I, we were trying to decide I met Peter when he was at, I was working for the city and he was too, but he was at culture and arts. So the paycheck was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you um, talking about? There's no money in arts. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we spoken accept- like a true musician. You know the <laughs> joke about the musician that won uh, won the lottery, right? Won three million dollars. No. And the reporter says, well, now that you won all this money, what are you going to do? He said, oh, I'm going to just keep working until the money runs out. Oh, and how music. long was that? He's going to just keep playing music till the money runs out. Yes, and then how long was that? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but Peter was at Culture and Arts, and we had just um, gotten the Martin Luther King holiday. And he told me, he wanted to, that I, you know, we were doing the art gal, art exhibit. And he said, I want you to fill up the courtyard every month for the holiday. And so we, that's how our relationship started. And the, the courtyard at Honolulu Holly. The courtyard at Honolulu Holly. And gosh, I don't remember how long that's been, but it's been a long time. And so Peter was a great. Well, he is a musician. And what I wanted to talk about was not so much that time. This is the anniversary of the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom. And um, it is the same time as the Martin Luther King holiday. And somehow it always gets tucked in with MLK and we forget about it. So I asked Peter if he would play um, one song or as many as he wants to, but one from his album that I just adore, and that's Hawaiian Nation. Yeah. So just pick one. Let, from let, let me yeah. give a kind of, uh, not so much an introduction to Go the ahead. Song, but just a little quick context. Um, uh, grew up in Waianae, long story short. I ended up at the University of Oregon, ended up in a folk band in the 60s, and did that for a number of years. We were fortunate enough to have contracts with uh, Elektra Records, all the big labels, Columbia. And we traveled the nation for years, college concerts, etc. When I left Hawaii in 1957, it was not a good time to be a Hawaiian. Uh, we were nowhere close. Uh, we had been silent for years and years and years. And it was a time when most Hawaiian parents, as an example, my parents, uh, stopped speaking Hawaiian because they wanted their children to assimilate, to become American, so to speak. I didn't know until I was 25 years old that both my folks were Manaleo, they were native speakers. I knew they spoke a little bit of Hawaiian, but they never did in the house. Me, my brother, three sisters. All right, this is, this is growing up, 40s, 50s, 60s. I leave town in 57. I don't get back to Hawaii till 75. Boy, have things changed. 1975, I get off the plane. The first thing I see is a Herb Connie poster. Okulea project was just getting started. Now you have to remember, growing up in my time and having left when I left, I really had very little clue. I knew I was Hawaiian, of course, from Hawaiian blood, 
I knew some of the basics of being Hawaiian, but I really was a, 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 a cultural ignoramus. Right? I knew what, what my folks could teach me, teach me. But then again, parents of that time were not trying to make their kids Hawaiian. They're trying to make their kids less Hawaiian. So they would blend, right? So here's this Herb County Post after all these years, I had really no clue of what it really meant to be a cultural Hawaiian. You know, you don't have to be an ethnic Hawaiian to be a cultural Hawaiian. Here's the Herb County poster, the project's here. And I see this hokulea, sails flying in the wind, the lehulu is out, the warriors on deck. I had never seen a picture like that that depicted what Hawaiians actually looked like and what they probably were like back then. Because up until those days, all the stuff that we had that were presenting Hawaiian and its culture were done by European artists, Japanese oh, yeah. artists. And their job was really simply to, to describe and to sketch out really quick sketches of kind of what they saw. It wasn't any kind of in-depth artwork or illustrations. So we growing up were absolutely absent because we were an oral tradition. We didn't write anything. We didn't have pictures. We didn't have drawings. We didn't have graphics. So when we grew up during my period, we had no clue what we looked like except from what, what we saw from Europe, right? So now here comes Herb Connie. Here comes, uh, and now all of a sudden through his drawings, et cetera, we're beginning to see ourselves as a culture. Then so happened at the same time, the politics of being Hawaiian springs up, oh, same yes. period with Kaho'olawe. Mm -hmm. Kaho'olawe and, and, and I am completely uh, knocked out by beginning to understand my history, the uh, so-called the illegal overthrow of, the, of, of, of Hawaiians, et cetera. And our search for dignity, our search for restoring our self-determination and all of that. And uh, so then- It was I in the 70s with the um, Concon and the rebirth, I guess it's the yeah. renaissance of the Hawaiians in that, in that very period that you're talking about. Yeah. And so now I'll, I'll try to be short enough. So now I come from a music background, largely folk music, a lot of songwriting, in, in folk music back in LA and New York and things. So now I'm swept up with my Hawaiian-ness and trying to figure out who I am. And so I start, I'm a musician. So I started writing uh, about it because back then there were not a song, uh, not a lot of songs being written about sovereignty, about uh, self-determination, about any of that. Uh, probably the closest thing uh, that came up was, uh, uh, God, I forget the title. Anyway, getting to the song. So this is the first song that I wrote, Feeling My Hawaiian-ness, and it's called the song for so uh, the Sovereignty Songs. Sing a song of sovereignty? Uh, sovereignty that the song, that's the official title. Oh, okay. And um, when I look back today, the word sovereignty is somewhat misconstrued when, when we say that Hawaiians are seeking sovereignty, we're really talking about Hawaiians seeking self-determination. In other words, we need to be able to convene ourselves, to organize, uh, organize ourselves, to seek out how we might be able to create a system of reconciliation with the federal government in order to ease the pain, to wipe the slate clean, and, and to either, I mean, there, there are different options in the self-determination package. Uh, one, you hear from uh, a, a lot of, we have 12 Hawaiian nations today. Uh, Is that? that organized. So you have this whole spectrum, everything from becoming like the Native American uh, Indians mm -hmm. who se seceding from the union, that whole spectrum. So when right. I say self-determination, I'm talking about the Hawaiians ability to organize and to determine their own future. So that's kind of what this, this song is about. And uh, wow, that was a long introduction for a song. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. I, I just absolutely love this whole CD. <laughs> so Song of Sovereignty. Okay.
sing a song of sovereignty wherever you may be. Throw your voice upon the wind and let it ring. Join the voices of the ages in an ancient melody. It's a song you should not be afraid to sing. It's a song that was written by our father's father's hand. It's the only thing we have at our command. Sing it to the children so that they will understand that their future lies within our trembling hands. We are native to this land. Let us walk hand in hand. We are children of the sea. Joined by the spirit of ancestral dignity, sing a song, sing a song of sovereignty. As we walk together down the dark and lonely road, let us pray the voice of reason shall prevail. Every step into the future is a step into the past. As we trudge along and move the trail, we are coming home to be Mother Nation of as we march from every corner of the land. See the rainbow in the sky, our colors flying high. We are coming home to be oh, Hawaii. Land. Let us walk hand in hand. We are children from the sea. You mean we are joined by the spirit of ancestral dignity. Sing a song, sing a song of sovereignty. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. I, since you mentioned Y and I, then you have one, one song on here, Y and I. Yeah, with the Y and I song. Yeah. That you wanted me to sing? Yes, please. Oh, I, you know, I can't do most of the songs because it's been so long. That CD was so long. I don't remember all the lyrics. I need the lyrics. Okay, let's do. Let's go back Here to the. Go. I'll tell you. Let me tell you what my favorite. My favorite quote okay. sovereignty song. Uh, it's the a Lico Martin song. Lico Martin, for those of you who are old enough to remember him, uh, he's still Hawaii there. Aloha. Well, I was going to do a Lico Martin song. Isn't that Lico Martin, Hawaii? No. Hawaii Loa? Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yes, Hawaii Loa Kuli Yeah. Lico Martin okay. was like Hawaii's Bob Dylan. Yeah. Uh, he wrote uh, he wrote a lot of great songs about the politics of, of being Hawaiian. And uh, this one is uh, was pretty much of a pretty good hit, different versions of it. 
But Lincoln Martin was one of my, my great inspirations uh, in writing about Hawaiian stuff. So. As I travel from place to place, some familiar, some are strange. To hear it means enchanting your home. As I listen to stories, oh, my eyes have seen the glory. So let us raise our voices in song to save our land. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I had forgotten. It's been so long. Yeah. Yeah, I had forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Now, tell us. We all, um, I was just looking at, at this one. Anthology. Anthology yeah. is a CD that was kind of an attempt on my part. Uh, by that time, I had five CDs out. And that uh, that represents kind of a collection of the songs that I liked the best of the five CDs. So it's it is uh, an anthology album. Well, uh, which one do you like best? 
that or you mean versus versus yeah. the uh, Hawaiian Asian? Or, or which song? Uh, which song? Right? Which song do you like best? Um, on your end, though, since you're going back to the future, so what do you, what do you I like? like? All of them. I like all of them. <laughs> what do you want to play for us? Oh, oh, geez. Uh, this turned into a music video here. <laughs> yes, it is. It's your music. You got the copyright. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I lied about the first song. Savage song was not the first song I wrote. No. Uh, yeah, uh, I forgot about the first song, which is on that CD. It's called, uh, uh, what's its title? You know what I mean? Rise Up and Follow Me. Actually, yeah. it became, uh, it was somewhat of a hit. I recorded that song with Del Beasley. We did a CD together called Apo and Beasley. And uh, it was a song I wrote actually on the big island. And I was just kind of starting to learn about, uh, relearn about my Hawaiian. Uh, anyway, it's another one of those self-determination type of songs. It's sort of a song that tries to remember. Rise up and follow me. 
you're going back to the future. So what does that mean? What are you going to, from where you are today, what are you, where you're going? There's a, I'm going to try to give you the simple answer. It's more complicated. I'm 82 years old. And so am and I. One so of the that, things that, that I'm that learning no about, deal. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, I'm 82. That's no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. It depends <laughs> on who you are. So I, I'm 82 years old and I've, I've come to the conclusion as I age that if you want to stay alive, you want to stay healthy, you want to be happy, you got to reinvent yourself. You know, most of the people that you knew when you're 82 are dead. Okay? A lot of the things of, of the conditions of existence in the world has changed. The difference today from you and I growing up, cell phones. So trying to adapt to age is if you're not on it, and if you don't stay on it, and if you give up and keep talking about how, how much you're looking to retirement, for those of the, when they say retirement, this is for those who mean uh, to stop working and do nothing. That's a sure road to death, at least mental death, right? So at 82, well, actually when I was 81, I decided I need to shake the tree. Uh, I needed to get to a, uh, uh, Start creating new circles of friends, renewing old friends who are still here, paying attention to family, and doing something with my life that has some meaning and is something that I am passionate about. I spent 40 years, the last 40 years of my life in government service, and I loved it. And I spent much of those 40 years in, uh, in doing Hawaiian, uh, you know, with, as an OHA trustee, uh, et cetera, doing Hawaiian things. I've now decided to go back to the 60s and do what was I doing then, which is playing music. Music. So not only back to my future of playing music, but back to my future by playing the music of the 60s and the 70s, which is still relevant today. The Bob Dylans of the world, Eagles, Linda Ronstadt, all these people are still popular. And some yes. of the young kids don't even know who they are, <laughs> but when not. they hear the music, they go, Wow, Grandpa, that's pretty cool. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't know. They don't know. So back to my is. future is about going back to where I was then. Uh, but knowing what I know now about what it takes to, you know, to, uh, to live and to try to be happy in relationship. I think. And it excites me. I get up in the morning now. I'm excited about seeking new opportunities. Uh, I get excited about some of the new friendships uh, that I'm doing, and uh, my wife and I are trying to stay, you know, active. So that's what I mean by back to the future. And you're recording. That's going to be the title of my of my new CD. Back oh, to and the you're future. recording more music. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. And so, my goodness, we are running out of time. That went fast. But what can I, I say? Well, yes. Yes. So. So now, uh, I have to tell my Martin Luther King story. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have time for that. Yeah. yeah let's okay. do it. Martin Luther King story. I am. Uh, uh, forget what year it was. Uh, I am Speaker of the House. Martin Luther King uh, uh, was assassinated. Uh, his wife uh, was traveling around the country uh, based on a congressional uh, decision to allow states to determine whether or not they were going to, they could have a Martin Luther King Day. And it, it was left up to, to each state to decide. And the condition was they had to substitute another holiday for it. So, uh, so Loretta Scott King, his wife with an entourage was going to every state capital. And she came to Hawaii, I'm vice speaker of the house. So I set up a meeting with her and her entourage and the speaker of the house. And I'm not gonna mention his name now because it doesn't make him look good, but he was a nice guy. Uh, 
So Speaker of the House, and we have President of the Senate, all the, the important legislators were there, and some people from the administration. So Loretta gets up and she does uh, all her justification about why uh, we should make honor her husband and create a holiday here for it. So beautiful presentation, just lovely. So she finishes and the room is silent and we're in the speaker's office. So we all kind of look to him uh, to do the opening you know, response. So the first thing he says, he says, well, you know, Loretta, Hawaii, we don't have a lot of Negroes here. <laughs> oh, what? I, we wanted to crawl under the table. <laughs> and you know, it was, he didn't mean that in, in any way, but he, he was, he wasn't very worldly in, in the sense, you know what I mean? It, it didn't. No, it, it took us two years to go through all of that to get the holiday, but. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, sweetheart, you will come back and sing some more for me, won't you? Yeah, uh, next time we'll set it up a little better. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll set up my end and, and Hallie take, take care of the thing about the delays and stuff. I'll, I'll try to figure that one out. She's thank super, you. Yeah. Thank well, you. thank you. This has been a real pleasure. And again, I want you to come back as you keep advancing the future. Because, you know, at 82, that's all we can do is yeah. the future. Yeah. And I want to get in a plug. Plug in for Think Tank. I think Think, think Tank think a really valuable service. So I yeah. thank you guys. Thanks. Haley. I've, I've been here four years now and I, I'm loving it. Yeah, it's great. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me to be here. Thank Make you. Aloha. 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 <laughs>